Hey, now you can hear me. That's what happens when I have somebody else running the camera. I forget to do things. So anyway, I'm starting by making my corn tortillas. Got my margarita going over there. So I started with a two cups of just plain masa. And then I put about a cup and a half of uh, hot water in there and did a little sprinkle of salt. And we're just gonna mix this up real good. I don't know if you wanna get in here and show them what this looks like. So corn tortillas are super, super easy to make. Just need masa and water and salt. It's the only ingredients you need. And so you just start to mix that together. If it looks a little dry, like this does a little bit, you can always just add a little bit more water. That's why I made a little bit extra water here so that you have it just in case you need it. And then after a while, you're just gonna start getting in there with your hands and start kneading it with your hands. You don't want it to be sticky, but you also don't want it to be crumbly like this. So it's starting to come together, but I may have to add just a little bit more water here in just a minute. The more you make them, you get kind of used to how they're supposed to look, how they're supposed to feel. They should have the consistency of about like plate, where it's a little springy, it's a little soft, but it's not sticky. It's not gonna stick to your hand as you mess with it. You can see that's starting to come together here. All right, I may just do just a bit more. It still feels just the littlest bit dry. <laughs> Anybody saying anything? Uh, Steven said, what's up Mike and Mike, LOL. Somebody laughed at <laughs> Stephen, who is it? Somebody I know? Uh, Stephen Smith. Stephen Smith. I don't know. Uh, I've been saying it wrong. It went back. Okay. So, there you go. That's about the consistency you want. You see, it's not sticking to my hand. It's pliable. And you don't have to knead it for long. You just want to do it just long enough to make sure all the water and everything's dispersed and mixed in there. And once you feel pretty good that it's mixed up the way you want it, and now I know this doesn't look like much, but you don't need much because we're only making taco shells, so they're not very big. And this will make about 15 tacos. So that has to rest only for about 10 minutes. Okay, it's not gonna rise or do anything like that, but it just needs to rest and kind of form together there. So let me clean up here. While that's resting though, Justine can bring you over here. So I don't know if you can aim them down into my pot here. So you could see there's my consomme and you see the meat that's in there. It's already starting to pull apart. Okay, so here, just slide over here. I'm gonna pull the meat out now. Remember, we've got that big shoulder roast in here. In case you missed parts one and two, you can go back and watch those to see how we made this. Part one really was the main part of how to make this. I'm trying to get that oxtail out of there. Zoom in on that to see it. Yep, so we got that beef shoulder roast in here, we've got the short ribs in here, and we've got that oxtail in there. The oxtail is gonna add some fat, which means it's gonna add some flavor. You know what would might help? I'm gonna flip this lid over here. I'm gonna get that spice bag out of the way. So remember we put that spice bag in there that has all your bay leaf and your uh, peppercorns, all that stuff, and it's so much easier to get all that stuff out because it's in that nice little bag. OK, 
Okay. I think I've just about got the meat. Oop. Another rib there. Yeah, I want to get it all. Yep, I think that's about it. Okay. So now that consomme is going to sit there and just kind of stay warm. And we're going to shred this meat up. And it's just going to, look at that, it just pulls right apart. Looks like a nice pot roast almost. Said that bag is a genius idea. Yeah, that's the way to do it is with that bag because I hate trying to chase down bay leaves in something. You inevitably always miss one. Ouch. It's very hot. Let me get another fork because that's hurting my fingers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Delicious. There it goes. Oh, so perhaps we should taste it. Mmm. That is good. It, it basically tastes like a pot roast with a little bit more spice to it. Because remember, we blended up those uh, chilies, and that was in that, that's what's in that consomme. So you get a little bit of the heat from those chilies, but it's really not bad. It's not super hot or anything. You should taste it, Justine. I'll wait for the taco. Okay. Look how nicely all of that is coming apart. That's a big hunk of fat from the oxtail. I'm gonna kind of leave that off to the side. I know some people would say, but you gotta have that in there. <laughs> I said I need an mmm was coming off of my apple. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I got one guy who keeps commenting saying that his, uh, his toddlers sit at home and he'll watch my show at home watching his kids. Uh -huh. And that, that's their favorite part. They'll laugh every time I say mmm. So apparently I'm a good kid show. <laughs> yes, our kids laugh every time I do it too. They're usually in the background just waiting for me to do it too. Yeah, and occasionally you might catch a little giggle. Yep. Yeah, if you hear a little giggle right when I do it on the video, that's my son. Because he likes to sit there and wait for me to do it and then he laughs. All right. Man, that looks good. We're going to mix a lot of this up. So that oxtail, for the most part, fell apart in. There's almost no meat left on that. There's a little piece right there, but that's almost all fat and bone right there. Oh, there's a little meat right there. Get it all. So, there we go. Ooh, that looks delicious. I wish they could smell it. Like, it smells so good. It does smell very good. All right, so that's our meat. So our meat is totally ready to go now. Our consomme is totally ready to go now. And all we gotta do is get our tortillas made. And so we're gonna make some fresh tortillas here. Oh, by the way, the cheese. So these are kind of made almost like a quesadilla. So you're gonna actually put uh, cheese down on them first and let that melt and then put the meat on. I guess the traditional cheese, and again, this is me going off a recipe is, and I don't, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, whatever this cheese is, that's the cheese they use, which is right here. And if it looks funny, that's because it is not a cheese that crumbles up or shreds up nicely. It actually is almost like a giant string cheese. In fact, Justine helped me do it. It unrolled into this really super long thing and you had to peel it almost like a string cheese, which it is what that is. Pretty interesting. It is interesting. Never used this cheese before, but We'll give it a shot. All right, so onto our tortillas. So that's not quite 10 minutes, but close enough for me. So it might be just a little crumbly. That's okay. It still holds together. And so, like I said, this should yield about 15. So I'm gonna attempt to roll this out evenly and then cut it. Let's see if I can do that. That doesn't seem to be working super well. I'm gonna try it anyway. So I should be able to get 15 out of this. So let's do three and then 
That's not quite right, but we'll get there. From the math teacher. Yes. What's your point? Should be able to do equal part fractions. Well, I'm getting close. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. So take your little piece. I'm going to roll it into a ball. So I have a tortilla press. You, of course, do not need to use a tortilla press. If you're going to make your own tortillas, I highly recommend getting one. They're not expensive, and it does make a big difference. So one of the pro tips for a tortilla press is you really should put some kind of plastic or something down. But what I have learned is like plastic wrap does not work because it just wrinkles up and it ends up wrinkling up your tortilla. I have found a gallon size Ziploc bag has that non-stick surface already kind of on it. And so I just cut up a gallon size bag and use that. And so you just place your little ball. See, that's all you really need. And just press it down. Oh, I didn't put the other piece of plastic on. Oh, what not to do. That's yes. What to do. So here, not here is, here's the joys of going live is you get to watch all the fails too. This is the kind of thing that on my episode, you'll notice I only show how to make one. That's because I mess up a bunch of them first. <laughs> and then I show you how to make keep it real. the right one. Yes. That's okay. We can salvage it. All right, let's try this again, shall we? I'm not paying attention, too worried about talking. All right, put the other oh, piece of plastic on. <laughs> That's the true pro tip. Life. It's a teaching video. <laughs> All right, now this will work. But you can see why you want the plastic. That's what I was doing is I was just showing you why you want the plastic. That's what it was. And so you get the nice, perfect little round tortilla. And so this is about the perfect size for a taco. I pre-cut a bunch of uh, parchment paper just because it makes it so much easier later when it comes time to cook those if you have them separated by parchment paper. So we're going to try to make about 15, 14 of these. All right. Let's see if I can I not... Say, remember the plastic. Help me remember the plastic. You got a helper this time. I was drinking last time. He wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Give me a margarita. That's what happened. Speaking of drinking, I left my margarita over there. Well, you keep that up. I'll drink it for you. So, Ziploc bag works nice because it's naturally nonstick. And so I don't have to worry about it getting stuck to the plastic or anything. Parchment paper is nice because it's naturally non-stick. Don't have to worry too much about it. So these are lessons learned from before because I've done this before where I didn't do the parchment paper, stacked the tortillas all on top of each other and they went back later and they're all stuck together. And so if they sit too long, they will stick together. Griddle juice. Anybody else talking on there? How many people are on? Yeah, yeah, it says four people are watching. Only four. It's still early yet. I, know. I had to rush home from work to help you, so. Yep. She saw my video earlier today. She saw that. I was like, I'll be ready by 3.30. And she's like, uh-oh. <laughs> Better get home. It looked like it was too much doing comments and everything. It, you know, it's not easy doing, focusing on all the food and on all the comments. This is why the people who work for Blackstone have a team behind the camera helping them do all that stuff. Making them look good. I don't have a team. I just have Justine, who is wonderful at trying to help me look good. There's only so much I can do. There is only so much you can do. Sometimes that can be a lost cause. Someone said, what about using the parchment paper on the bottom and then the Ziploc on the top? Save a step? Please so shoot. that is a good question. And that's actually, again, a lesson learned. Um, what I have found is when you 
because there's moisture in this uh, tortilla. And when you press the tortilla down onto the parchment paper, the moisture causes the parchment paper to wrinkle. And so what you end up with is, yes, it'll be stuck to the parchment paper and save you a step, but it'll be all wrinkled and mis misformed. It won't be perfectly flat like what you really want. So it's better to use the plastic and then just put it on the parchment paper after the fact. So I hope that answered your question. Anybody else talking? No, not yet. Anybody wa I know on? One. Huh? Says there's seven people watching. Ooh, seven people. But it's not showing me here. So if you didn't get to watch, I'm gonna plug it again. If you didn't get to watch the first part, this is part three because I'm trying to show the whole process because these tacos are complicated. And I could have done one of my quick shot videos that I usually do, but you wouldn't get the full uh, sense of how much time went into making these tacos. So it's not, actually, I take it back. It's not that they're complicated, it's that they just take a lot of time because you have to let the meat sit there for a long time and you have to get the peppers going and you have to blend them up. So if you're interested in the process and you miss part one, because I did it at around noon, and then part two, which I did around 1.30, then you could go back and watch those. They're both on my YouTube channel, and they're on Facebook. Right. You're smiling like somebody's saying something. <laughs> well, uh, Mike, who asked before, said, keep it young looking, no wrinkles. And then CJ just got on, said, sup, my brother. And then it, by the way that CJ said that, that means it's CJ Frazier, right? Yep. And then uh, Mike went back on time equals money equals yummy. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you saw how easily that beef just pulled apart. And so that, that's all from it sitting for about three full hours, if not more, uh, in that consomme, just stewing away. And so that's going to be super delicious. I can't wait. And it's nice and moist, too. I know. There's that word that everybody loves. I know, moist. some people don't like it. But you know, in the cooking community, moist is a good thing. People no, like that. Not even making bread necessarily. You want a moist bread sometimes? No, not a moist, soggy bread. Well, I'm not saying it's soggy. Soggy's <laughs> a different thing than moist. All right. Moist is not a word that bothers me. It can be used to describe good things. It's kind of like, uh, I think my brother told me once, because he's also a teacher, or a family full of teachers. I think he told me once, because we teach elementary school. And of course, elementary kids always want to know, like, things about you. Like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite whatever? And so, I think he told me once that anytime a kid asked him what his favorite color was, he would say, golden brown. And the kids would always look at him funny, and he would say, because everything tastes better when it's golden brown. <laughs> And I think that's true. How many are at? I'm I lost count, but we're we're getting near the end here. We're in the, the final third here. Alright, I'm gonna sip on the margarita a little more. Mine's all the way across the island over there. I know, it's about to become mine. Anybody else saying anything? Nope, not yet. I've got six people on. Passive observers. Yeah. Rob Collins. This isn't watching. exactly the most exciting thing to watch, but I think it's fun to have y'all see the whole process. And I know that goes against what I usually preach, because usually I, I make my videos the way I do because I get sick of watching people do the whole process. But yeah, you're this, the attention span of a gnat. Yes, yes. <laughs> Part of the reason why I broke this up into parts. Uh, one said just watching, and then you got grilled juice break, aka your margarita. All right, here we go. Yes, so they're. They're saying you need a break. There you go. That's a good margarita. Mm -hmm. We used um, Williams Sonoma Classic Lime Margarita Mix, and it's very, very good. And 
It's got what? It's kind of a tangy mix to it. It is tangy. Well, that's because it's it's real. Mm -hmm. It's not like that weird bright green margarita fake mix. margarita. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. It's a. It's actually made with real lime juice. Mm. Cinco de Mayo is quickly becoming one of my favorite holidays. But we got our chips and guacamole. It wouldn't be Cinco de Mayo without guacamole either. And since these tacos don't exactly call for guacamole on them, we're just doing some chips and guac. I did not make the guacamole, just so you know. I'm too busy doing this stuff. I'm not going to make the guacamole. In case anybody asks. All right, three more after this one. No, oh, no, this one looks like it wants to rip. I got this far without ripping one. Okay, I saved it. Should invite some people over. I don't know if we're gonna be able to eat all fifteen of these. Oh, like, well, <laughs> we'll do what we can. They're not going to be huge tacos, so that'll help. Okay. How many left? Two more. Two more. For the, after this one. All right. Could you imagine if we were doing these by hand, though, how much longer that would take? Sitting there with the rolling pin, rolling each one out individually. I applaud those people who do that. Yes, some people do it. <laughs> okay, so once we have these done, it's going to be heading out to the Blackstone, and we are going to be cooking these, which doesn't take long because I can, because of the enormous size of the Blackstone griddle, I can cook pretty much all of them at one time, which is nice. And so that won't take too long. And then once they're cooked and they're still hot, we should be able to take them and dip them in the consomme that's right there and then start cooking. So this part should go fairly quick. All right, oh, I got one more. I thought I was done. Oh, this is a little one. Oh, Daryl says, have the same cabinet, granite, and microwave. Daryl must have really good taste. <laughs> and then Mike says, is it heating up? Oh, the Blackstone? It is not. But that's intentional because you don't want it too hot when you start cooking these. And you want to be able to monitor it and make sure they get to just the right level of brownness. So if I had them too hot, what would happen is by the time I got the last one on there, the first one would be burned. So if I turn it on and then throw them on, it gives me some wiggle room to kind of get them all on there and then monitor. So I'm being strategic here. Okay, so we're gonna have to come back for the meat. I may send you after the meat in the pot. Okay, in a little I'm gonna bit. follow you up. All right, oh, hold on. I need my tools. Yeah, don't do the wrong thing. No, trying not to. Gotta get the door. Get my stack of tortillas. All right, here we go. I hope we don't lose anybody on the live feed moving out here. Okay, so she's going to go get the meat and the consomme because like I said, these are not going to take long to cook. Um, I like to always wipe down my griddle because after my last cook, there's always going to be just that little bit of residual whatever from that. I try to clean it after each cook, but sometimes there's just that little bit of something. Okay, so now that that's going, we're just going to throw these down. Oops. 
slide right off that parchment paper. So I'm trying to avoid putting them all the way up here to the front because that part doesn't get as hot as the rest of it. And so if I can fit them all more towards the back, I'm going to try. If I have to put them at the front, I'm going to do that last so that I can keep an eye on them. Right here. Nope, that should be it. Oh, I do need the cheese. Did you not bring the cheese? Justine's such a good helper. All right, so cooking tortillas. When cooking tortillas, you basically want to get them just to start turning brown. Right when you start getting those speckles of brown is when it's time to flip them. Oh, I've got one more. I'm gonna put it in the cold corner. I may have to move it around some. So, you wanna come over here a little closer so they can see. So this area burns hotter. So those are the ones, even though they weren't put on first, so I'm gonna kinda of keep an eye on. Yeah, we're not brown just yet. Okay, you don't wanna mess with them too much because they will crack and break before they've cooked all the way. And what you may notice is they may start to kind of curl a little bit on the outside and they may start to bubble up on, in the middle. That's good, you want both of those things. So that's a good sign. Oh, in the smell, can you smell it? Oh, yeah. Nice, fresh corn tortilla smell. Love that smell. All right, as this is heating up, I'm gonna turn my heat down because I don't want it to get too hot. So like I said, I was being strategic by not having the heat on ahead of time because it allowed me to get all of these out here and not have to worry about the first one being burned by the time I finished. Because I'm telling you, if you had them, if you had it heated up, by the time you got all those slapped down, the first one would be overcooked. Now I've got plenty of time to kind of monitor. They're starting to brown up a little bit. So I don't know how close, you, I don't, can you zoom on that? Not that I know of, but I can okay. your phone right in the heat. So you can see the, how it's curling up there on the edge. That's a good sign. You'll also notice over here, a little less curling going on. This is my cooler side of my griddle. Down here in the front is cooler. So you gotta have to watch that. You need to know your zones. So that may have been a little premature on that one. I'll flip that back over. And like I said, you wanna be careful because they will crack. Hey, Mike McCourt and Nicole Marie and Joanne. Y'all should say hi. Talk to me. Mike's been the one talking, doing a lot of talking. Oh. And then Harry got cooking. <laughs> Good Schmidt. All right, I think we're getting close here. So you see that brown starting to form? Yeah. A little premature on that one still. They could wait just a little longer. So you don't want to burn it like you do the buns. No, I did burn the buns. So the other day I went, was it a live video? It yeah, was a live was. video. And I got such a hard time in the comments about not toasting my buns. So I went back and attempted to toast the buns for us and of course didn't pay attention to them and burned them on the griddle. And they got, it, I burned them so bad they got stuck to the griddle. <laughs> <That's talent>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and flip these. I can always flip them back and let them cook a little more. That's right. Yeah. 
Rhonda. The only Rhonda I know is Rhonda Young. It's not Rhonda Young, yeah. right? Man, they smell good. I wish there was like smell a vision through this. Uh, Andy said if you have a taco rack, it works great for toasting. Yeah, so I'm not toasting them. And yes, the taco rack would work, but see these are fresh, so I'm actually cooking them. So when it came time to assemble the tacos, yes, that would be perfect if I had a taco rack. But since I'm cooking them because they're fresh made, I need them directly on the heat. And you can kind of come see when you flip them. So like I said, you're going to start to see like the edges curling up. But when you flip them, that's when you'll start to see the bubbles in the middle. So like on this one. I don't know if you can see it. See how it's starting to bubble up in the middle there? Mm -hmm. There's a nice big bubble going on here. Again, that's all a good sign. That's what you want to see. Don't go trying to pop your bubbles. Okay? Let it bubble up. And you want to make sure that these do cook all the way through because otherwise when you go to try to dip them later, they may fall apart. I'm hoping just because they're fresh that I don't have that issue. <laughs> we will see, but I'm hoping not. Oh, Annie said, yep, was talking about the buns. Comment might be a little behind. Oh, okay. The buns that yeah. I burned. Yeah, well, using the Oh, the... The taco rack is good for toasting the buns. Oh, there's a pro tip right there. Use the taco rack, set them on there. That's not bad. Then you don't, you won't have to worry about burning them because they'll be up off the heat. I wonder if the warming rack would be good for that as well, or if the warming rack's too, too far off the heat. So. Another concern that you may have about these is that you don't want them to turn into tortilla chips, right? So you want them to be somewhat soft. And so you may be concerned that if you overcook them, they'll end up being too stiff. Well, the good news is, is they may be a little stiff when you first take them off of the griddle, but if you stack them, and let them sit, they will actually start to soften. Like they'll almost like steam each other. So the ones on the bottom will actually end up being your softer ones. So what you end up doing is you stack them all together. And then when you pull tacos, taco shells, you pull from the bottom and get the softest one off the bottom first. We'll see how that works today. Hopefully it will work. All right, I think we are done. So I threw all my parchment paper away. Here, you want me to get them? Nope, I got it. I only need one. So I'm gonna stack these all together. So when they, ouch, they're getting hot. When they cook, you don't have to worry about them sticking anymore. So you can stack them. I would not stack them while they're fresh and they're not cooked because they will stick. But now I don't have to worry about it because they should not stick anymore because they are cooked. That one's giving me issues. What? I did and I messed it up. All right, so we got our stack of tortillas. Got a nice little miniature one there. That'll be our tasting taco. Always make a tasting taco. All right, over there now? Well, so there's going to be a process to this. So we have our consomme here. So what we're going to want to do, I'm actually going to make these my meat tongs because they are a little sharper 
Um, will you put that down and go turn the fan on? We got flies, and the, the, the fan will keep them away. Good old Texas flies. Yes. That was one of the worst things about moving out here is all the flies. And I wouldn't be heartbroken if you brought me a mar my margarita either. So, griddle my griddle juice, that's right. All right, so the process here, in fact, I'm gonna come get you. The process here, we've got our consomme right here. I'm gonna put it right next to the griddle because we're gonna dip and throw them immediately on the griddle. And then we've got our meat and our cheese. And those are tortillas, nice close up of them. They look good, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these tongs because they're flat. You don't wanna use these pointy ones because they'll puncture your tortilla. And use these tongs to dip and put in here and then throw it on here. I'm gonna have to work in batches because I could probably only get a few on. And then I'm gonna throw the cheese on and let it start to melt and then throw some meat on, okay? So I'll prop you up here. You can watch me attempt to do this. Again, I say I have never done this before. I have never made these before. And so this is all a new experience to me. So we're just going to see how it works. You want to take a drink before you get started? Let me get a couple on. Okay. So we're going to dip. Oh yeah, that worked good. Throw it down. If Justine can come over here, she can kind of get a close-up on the dipping here. <coughs> yes, it is on medium. In fact, I'm going to turn it down a little. I'm, I'm having some issues here with the, the peppery consomme because it's... Yeah. Woo! Ooh, Steaming up in my up. face. All right. So let's do these six. Let's start there. All right. So now, oh, about what went out of order. We're going to throw our cheese down. <laughs> yeah, man. Woo! That's some potent stuff there. Ouch! Woo! Don't move cheese off the griddle with your hands. Pro tip or just smart tip? Just don't be a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that one's puffing up good. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna let that start to melt. All right, while it's melting, get your griddle juice. That's a good, good plan. Oh, that one's mine, yours is over there. Oh, oh, thank you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get our meat on. Because. Right, yep. I hope it's good. I hope so too. You know what? There's one more thing I need you to go get me that I didn't think about. Yep. That's what you're here for. Um, I need a one of those big red spoons because I need to ladle stuff onto these. Yeah. All right, there you go. All right. Let's see, Justine's so good doing all my walk of shame for me. filled with cheese, if there is such a thing. Here's her 
our little miniature one. So cute I'm going to come back over here and kind of flip some of these. I'm being super awkward with this first set because I'm figuring out what I'm doing here. So, thank you. I really should have, and I forgot this, should have ladled a little bit of uh, consomme in the middle of these. We'll dip them and it'll be okay. But for this first set, we'll be fine. Oh, here I have forgotten again. I hope she's in getting me a plate. Look at you. You were already thinking, he's going to need a plate. All right, we're going to call these testers so we can see what we think. Okay? No, you use that stuff as a dip. Let me get the next batch going. So you're supposed to uh, have like a, a ramekin full of the consomme and then you dip the tacos as you eat them. Man, that pepper or the chilies that are in there. Woo! Strong. <coughs> All right, so this batch will be perfect. There's our mini one. All right. So now, this is the last of them. Let's do our cheese. Is anybody saying anything? Trying not to. Come get close-ups on these so people can see what we're doing here. Running low on cheese. May have overdone the cheese on the last batch. It will be okay. All right. So let's get this meat. I'll throw that on there. You know, for my first time making these, I would say this isn't terrible. I might have some people like making fun of me, saying that I'm doing certain things wrong, but you know what? I don't care. to spread the meat just a little thinner. Ah. Hey, your dad just got on. He's not watching. Hey, Dad. He's probably thinking, what in the world are you making? All right, there's our mini one. Okay. So, now we really should take a little bit of this. We should just...
All right, now the fold. I think I may have figured this part out. That sounds uh, so amazing. Oh, yeah. It's one of the best parts about cooking on the Blackstone is you get to have that sizzle. That <coughs> chili steam getting to you? Yep. All right, this one's not working with me here. Fold. Ooh, look at that cheese melting out of that one. Well, by pouring that stuff in the middle, now when I kind of squeeze them down, it squeezes some of it out. Gives you more of a sizzle. So my man didn't that. <laughs> there on my arms is getting a bit hot. <laughs> Put that on. That one I may not want to flip. There's enough cheese pouring out of that one. This one doesn't have any cheese, so it's not holding too well. All right, so we've got our plate over here. Those are holding up pretty good. So, since you got that propped up, there are two little white ramekins in the house. Oh, thank you. Just so you can read my mind, we've been married long enough. You didn't see that. Oh, we all saw that. Okay. So there's my stack of tacos, if you want to get a close up on that. Okay, so we are gonna put some more consomme in here. And that really ought to be it. You could get some fresh oregano and sprinkle it in there if you wanted. I don't know that that's going to add a whole lot of flavor. It's probably more going to be just making it pretty. But there you go. So this is going to be our first taste test of this, Justine and I. I'm going to let you taste. I'll wait. <laughs> Justine's nervous. All right, so I took one off the bottom because it's a little cooler. I'm going to attempt to not get it all over my beautiful shirt here. Clay is excited for you to drip some, though. I know. She's, she's looking, looking for it. So we're dipping. All right, where is it? Mmm. There it is. Actually, it's really good. That cheese is interesting because it's it's gooey and stringy, but it's not like super super melty, you know. It's good. the The beef is really really flavorful. The dog is like, hey, drop it. The consomme is actually not spicy, like you would think. I mean, it's a little, but not, considering the amount of chilies that you put in, you would have thought it'd be a lot spicier. I know, dog, I see you licking your lips. The last few times you've done it, you dropped stuff. Hey, Edna's on. Hey, Edna. I had Amazon earlier. These are actually really good. I really do think the fresh corn tortilla really makes it. Because you really get that, that corn flavor. 
they kind of crisped up nicely when cooking them, but they're not burned. So you get that just that little bit of crunch from them, but it's not like a hard taco shell. You know, it still has that soft shell with just a little bit of crisp. So. Uh, Mike says uh, I can hear the crunch also. Well, yeah, I got the microphone really close to me, so yes, you could probably hear me chewing. I apologize for that. Well, I can but, hear the crunch all the way over here, too, so yeah. it's a good crunch. It is a good crunch. The cheese is really good. The cheese is really interesting. It adds a lot to it, to the texture, because it's not like a typical cheese that you would just like, when you buy regular shredded cheese and put it on and it just turns all melty. This actually has kind of a, a, uh, a little bit of a, I don't know how to say it, almost like a, a string cheese, like it would be a bite to it. That's what I'm trying okay. to think of. It has a bit of a bite to it. I wanted to see you struggle. Well, I did. <laughs> you didn't know what I was trying to say. Nope. So I hope you enjoyed Cinco de Mayo Day, uh, going through this whole process of making this whole thing. So if you want to get one more quick close up on these beautiful tacos that I, we made here, this was our achievement from today's work for Cinco de Mayo. So thank you all for tuning in. And if you missed parts one and two and you wanna see how to make these for yourselves, you could go back and watch parts one and two. I've been putting the recipe in the description on my YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube and watch it and get the recipe right there. And I'd be interested to see and hear what you guys are doing for Cinco de Mayo. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my Teespring store. What else should I say? Oh, uh, tune in the rest of this week because we have a huge beef tenderloin that we're going to make. Uh, probably going to start making that tomorrow because it'll take most of the day to cook. Well, it'll take several hours to cook. But we're going to make all kinds of food throughout the weekend with that, including I've been tagged in a uh, crunch wrap contest. And I'm thinking that tenderloin will find its way into a crunch wrap. So we'll see. All right. So. Until next time, thanks.